strong and balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with PeopleFit. If you've never done this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. And with that, let's begin class with a gentle warm up. Feet are going to be about hips width apart, knees are soft, uh, nice broad across your chest and shoulders. Pull your head up off your shoulders and let's do some gentle circles. If there are things that you does, that do not feel comfortable, or you know you should not do, just hold off on them. All the exercises are optional. Great, and let's reverse circles. Fantastic. And we'll do some arm circles in one direction. Excuse my clutter. If you could really see what was all around me here in my basement, you'd be amazed. It is now staging the area for three kids going off to college. So uh, I'll, I'll be shoveling the stuff back in a few weeks. Good. And let's come backwards. Thank goodness we have a basement. If it bothers you to circle up here, you can circle down lower as long as we're warming up those shoulders. And fantastic. Let's come back and forth now with the arms. If you'd like to warm up your lower body at the same time, arms come back and a little step back at a diagonal. Step back and arms back at the same time, trying to pull yourself up from your front leg only without doing a lot of pushing off of your back foot. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Up nice and tall. And we're going to do some marching in place. Fantastic. Um, let's get into one of four balance positions. The easiest is feet together. You can, the next easiest is heel to the inside of your big toe, one foot in front of the other, or one foot up off the ground, wherever you're comfortable. We're gonna do a lot more of these little warm up exercises. I know it's been a few weeks since I've seen you guys. So knees are soft, belly button is tight, and let's just look down towards your toe and up towards the ceiling, toe and ceiling. And five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch, if you had your feet staggered, let's switch feet. Otherwise, if you had your feet together, just keep them where they were. Knees soft, toe to ceiling again. If after a few repetitions, you feel like you're doing a lot of stepping to catch yourself, make your feet a little wider by about an inch. And if not, you can bring them a little bit more narrow. In four, three, two, and one. Great, let's switch your feet again. And this time we're going to soften those knees and look right and left. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great. Let's switch feet. And we're going to do the same thing. Looking right and left. Good. 
and three more, two, and one. Let's switch feet again. We're now going to bring your hands up, clasp them together, point your thumbs up towards the ceiling, look at your left thumbnail, and while you're looking at your left thumbnail, you're going to twist right and left, right and left. Good, listen to those feet. Allow the hips to move to catch yourself. And one more rotation. Fantastic. Let's switch feet. Do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Look at your opposite thumbnail and rotate again. Four, three, two, and one. Let's bring those arms down. We're going to go right to one of your weights. If you have a weight you'd like to use, that's fantastic. We're going to start off with calf raises. So if you feel more comfortable having your hands free to grab onto something, that's fine. We're going to take the weight right in front of you and we're going to come back onto your heels and up onto your toes heels and toes i'm coming off a fantastic weekend we celebrated my father's 85th birthday and all his grandkids and kids were able to get there so it was a lot of fun 16 of us went golfing and guess who won? The 85 year old. Yes, I was trying. And no, I did not win. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Eight, it's pretty impressive. Good. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go right into a bent over row. So you're going to hold the weight in one hand, you're going to step forward with the opposite side. If you want to hold on to a countertop or um, a wall or your knee, preferably, lean forward, nice straight back, nice long neck, and let's just row. Elbow tight by your side. Good. Good, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go to the opposite side. Same thing, nice long spine. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Again, these can be done without a weight. Let's put the weight right back in front. Let's turn those toes slightly in and let's continue with our heel and toe raises. It's great to strengthen your calves in multiple positions. This one is in case you ever trip and you step over like this, that's kind of the way your calf will interact with the ground to hopefully stop you from continuing. Good, in five, four, three, two, and one. Nice core exercise. If you don't have lower back issues, let's continue with your weight. Knees are, our soft feet are a little bit wider than hips width apart. And we're gonna do about a three quarters motion. If your shoulders bother you, you can do a short motion three quarters of the way and then back. Um, if not, you can do a nice, full three-quarter circle. Good. The key is not to allow your shoulders to move forward or back. 
you should stay in a nice flat plane as if you're doing this right up against the wall. Good. Up and over. Belly button's tight, knees are soft. Up and over. Before. Three. Two. And one. Let's go the opposite direction, please. Three quarters and back. Good. And we're going to do five more. Good. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Fantastic. If you have a water bottle, a weight, whatever, if you could place it on the ground in front of you, that would be fantastic. You're going to stand about six inches away from the weight. You're going to bring your feet a little closer than hip width, and you're just going to work on a little bit of swaying side to side. Remember, you're that big, oh, there's minimal hip movement in this exercise. We're just coming back and forth. Trying to see if you can feel the pressure going from the outside border of one foot to the other. Fantastic. I'm going to reach out to the side, soften this knee, and let's just gently touch one side of the weight and back down. I want you to touch the weight like you're, you'd be touching an egg. Don't crack it. Good. If you can, do one side of the weight, the other side of the weight and then back down. One side, the other side and down. Or if you'd like to try something a little bit more advanced, spending more time on this foot, one side of the weight, the other, touch the back of your calf and then go right back into your touches, okay? Or just one side up and down. You see what you feel comfortable with. And three more, two more. And last one, very nice work. Let's shift out to the other side, soften that knee up, hand on your hip. Let's touch and return. Touch and return. Good. Or touch one side, the other in return. Or one side, the other in the back of the calf. Good. Four more, three, two, and one. Very nice. Uh, let's see if we can, you can get rid of that weight. If you have a glass of water that you'd like to grab a quick sip, please do. And then I come right back to the standing position. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of stretching here. Um, the first thing we're gonna try, especially if you have a, like a back of a chair or something, we're gonna try and stretch the inside of the thighs a little bit. And by doing that, we're gonna just come a little bit wide with the feet, okay? If you have lower back issues, you can either try to maintain a little arch in your back um, by keeping that arch in your back and you can slide your hands either down onto your thighs with your chest extended up, or you can hold right onto a countertop. Uh, you're going to get the same stretch. If, so some of you will feel it in the inside of the groin. Others will feel it in the back of the hamstrings. If you want to get a little bit more of a groin stretch, you can work your feet open a little bit. And that's all we're going to do is gently sink on down. If you don't have any back issues and you don't mind stretching your lower back a little bit, you most certainly could reach down towards the floor. But that's completely up to you in terms of your comfort level with the stretch. Nice, gentle breaths. I like to do this with my knees slightly unlocked. So to, I shouldn't say slightly, unlocked, uh, slightly bent, um, just to take a little pressure off of the knees. And you're just gonna use your breath to relax into the stretch for about six more breaths. And 
three, two, and one last breath. Let's come on up, bend those knees slowly, wiggle those feet back in and get yourself right up to a standing position. If you feel lightheaded at all, I want you to mark in place and take a few breaths until you don't feel lightheaded anymore. Fantastic. Let's stretch out your hip flexors and your calves while we're here. Let's turn your uh, right toe slightly in, an exaggeratedly long step with your left foot. Now I want you to shift some weight back onto your back foot. Pull that belly button in to get a nice little posterior pelvic tilt. And let's bend your front knee. And again, you can hold on to something for this. And let's just hold that for about 30 seconds. Did you hear about the Italian restaurant owner uh, that recently died? Yeah, he passed away. Oh, that's bad. Uh, that one was courtesy of my daughter. I think she's taken over the dad jokes for me. So she told me that the other day. I was like, he passed away. I'm like, oh, that's bad. But it's right up my alley, right up my alley. Okay, let's switch to the other side, please. Belly button in, let's bend that front knee. I have yet to see anyone turn off their monitor or uh, leave the group after one of my jokes. So I think I'm still doing okay. But the material is getting worse and worse. <laughs> 10 more seconds here. Fantastic. Let's come on back and shake those legs right out for a moment. So from here, we're going to work on our star exercise. Feet are together for this. And you can do this just with a leg coming forward, back into the side. And that will leave this hand free to grab onto something if you need it. If you're doing this near uh, a countertop or something, then I would just face to the side so that you can kick to the side, back and front unimpeded. Otherwise you could just do it freestanding here. Uh, and you can always add the arm in. So knees are soft, come on up, come to the side and back, forward, side and back. The most advanced way to do this is to actually not touch the ground on the way back, just to sweep along the ground. And three more, good, two, and last one, great. Let's switch over to the other side, please. Same thing, feet together, and you can either you just use the foot or the foot and arm. Come on up, come on out, and back, forward, side, back if you want to challenge yourself just slow it down good and five more four three two And last one. Fantastic. Before we get down on the ground, we're going to do a little bit of a twist for your spine as well as the back of your shoulder that we were using those rows for. So feet pretty wide. Let's take your right arm and bring it directly across your body. If it doesn't bother you, you're going to pull your elbow towards your chest. Okay. Soften up your knees. In leading with your head, you're going to look around to your uh, left, please. And you're going to pull your arm around your body to get a little stretch, hopefully of the shoulder, maybe of the neck, maybe of the back a little bit. 
Typically, this one will tell you where you're tight. Don't want you to feel it in the lower body really all that much, so keep those knees soft. 10 more seconds. That's great. And let's switch to the other side. Again, gently pull the elbow towards the chest. If, if you feel like coming up here bothers you up in the shoulder, you can bring it down a little bit lower. See where you're comfortable. Pull your head up off your shoulders, bend your knees, rotate around, leading with the head. And back towards the middle. And we're gonna get down on the floor or into bed for a few remaining exercises. If you have a resistance band that you'd like to use, it's a great time to grab it. Everyone's gonna start on their back, please. Okay, so on your back, you can either start off with some pelvic tilts, which is great for anyone that may have some lower back issues. So a pelvic tilt is done with my knees bent. My lower back is going to push into the, into the floor or the bed until you feel your abdominals start to contract and you hold it for five seconds, then you relax. If you would like to maybe try some bicycling today, we're going to pull those abs in, same exact position, bring the knees up, hands are going to go behind the head, and you're going to head towards elbow to opposite knee, okay? But you really want to just control your core. So if you feel like you're arching, bring the knees a little closer to the chest and just cycle up here. If you don't, then you most certainly can bring the feet down a little bit further. And you don't have to necessarily use the arms, but you most certainly can. If you're doing pelvic tilts, it's five seconds and then relax, five seconds and then relax. Otherwise, we're going to cycle here for about 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ah, let's come on back onto your back. Pull those knees and feet together and let's just do a little bit of a rotation side to side. It'll loosen up that lower back. Remember, you can protect your lower back by gently pulling in your abdominals, help you with the swing over. And you're, we're not stopping in any one position. We're just gonna gently go side to side. And if you feel a gentle stretch on your opposite, from the opposite direction of, your, of where your knees are going in the small of your back, that tends to be pretty normal for a stretch for most people. Four, three, two, and one. Let's put on that resistance band. If you have one, you do not need it. You're gonna get a great workout with it, without it. And we're going to put that resistance band, if you have one, just above your knees. Okay, knees and feet are together. You're going to roll onto your side. And we're going to start off with some clamshells. And hands on your hip. Let's open and close the clam. Good. Keeping that hip rolled forward slightly. In five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to do a fire hydrant now. So you push your hip away from you, raise your knee and foot up. You're stretching the band with your knee as you reach towards the ceiling. For five. Four, three, two, one. Hold on to your hip. 
pull it back slightly like you're rolling back and let's open the foot and close the foot. Knees stay together. Okay, knees stay together. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's straighten your legs out in line with your body. Roll your hip forward slightly. Slide your top foot back till your top toe is hitting your bottom heel. And let's come on up and down. And hopefully if you do all that right, you'll start to feel it in the side of your hip for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You got the rock stars. Let's roll on to the other side. And we're going to start off in your clamshell position. Hip is rolled slightly forward. Knees and hips are flexed. You're going to open and close your knee. Feet stay together. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Fire hydrants, raise up and down, up and down. Push your hips slightly away from your ear. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Pull your hips slightly back. And let's open your foot and close it. Okay. Some of you might say, ah, I don't even feel anything with this. You're probably sufficiently strong in those internal rotators. Others of you, like me, will start to say, I don't know, something's getting tired back in here. So those deep muscles that don't really get a lot of exercise for eight, seven, six, five but they come in very helpful when you're losing your balance. A three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's straighten your legs out in line with your body. Let's roll your hips slightly forward. Take that top leg, bring it back again, toe to heel, and let's come up and down. In 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic job. Let's take that resistance band off. Come right onto your back. Cross your uh, right ankle over your left knee. And you're going to gently take your left hand and pull your knee across your body. So hopefully you feel a stretch in those muscles that we were just working on the outside of your right hip. Great. And let's switch to the other side, please. Again, left ankle crosses right knee, right hand grabs the right knee, excuse me, grabs the left knee and pulls it across your body. Okay, let's go soles of your feet together. Let the knees drop down to the side. If you'd like to use the palms of your hands to push down to get a little bit more of a stretch in the groin muscles, please do. And I will leave you, leave you to continue with any other stretches that you have. Thank you for joining me this morning. It was a pleasure. I hope that you guys all have a great week. Thank you.